Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm talking to you about a new film on Netflix called Spiderhead. It stars Chris Hemsworth, Miles Teller, and it's directed by Joseph Krasinski. Same director did Top Gun Maverick. Out right now and one of the biggest movies in the world. So I don't know why Netflix didn't promote this better. What the hell is going on, Netflix? Promote your films better. I mean, I guess I saw it anyway, so it worked out. If you have a Netflix subscription, I guess you're going to see it in your, in your feed. So, oh, whatever. Uh, the basic premise of this film is you have a group of people that have been incarcerated, you know, they've been given prison sentences, and they agree to go to this experimental facility, you know, they sign away their rights, as you say, to go to this experimental facility and receive these experimental drugs as test subjects for Chris Hemsworth's pharmaceutical company. Now, when you start toying with people's emotions, things can take a turn for the worst. Anyways, uh, the movie. Yeah, so Miles Teller's character, he's one of the inmates. Uh, Journey Smollett is another inmate called Lizzie. And those are kind of the, the central two uh, in terms of the overall film. So you have these inmates at this facility. It's called Spiderhead. It's on an island. It's a beautiful location. At the beginning of the film, Chris, Chris Hemsworth takes a float plane in. And it's a beautiful cinematography. It looks like a beautiful place. I don't know if they filmed it in Australia or what, but it looks great. So he gets to the facility, and right away, we're... we're uh, we're given a taste of what they do here. They, they put people in a room, two-sided mirror, computers everywhere where they can monitor and, and record all of their facial reactions, all of their emotional uh, tics, what's going on with them when they're administered these drugs. They have like a pack on their spine, which is where the drugs are administered by the facilitators of the project, which is Chris Hemsworth's characters named Steve and his assistant named Mark. So Jeff, in one of the first scenes, he's given this drug love actin and they bring in a young woman and she's given love actin and this is basically it's love actin love actin what does that mean like they, they kind of play around with it. it's tongue in cheek it's like the love drug basically they both become sexually aroused boom you know what happens uh later on in the film they bring in an old lady a couple scenes later uh same thing same deal they go at it so there's a lot of interesting ideas in terms of ethical and moral considerations in playing with people's emotions eliminating their free will and what that means in a society what that means to a person's humanity uh the movie also deals a lot with guilt and that burden on somebody's shoulders the possibility for redemption and what all that means miles teller's character is in for drunk driving killing his friend and he carries that guilt with him. Uh, so basically what starts off, the movie kind of takes off when this young woman that I mentioned earlier that Miles Teller was in the, in the room with, she is given a dose of this drug called dark flummox or something, dark something. It's a dark drug and it makes you incredibly fearful, just terrified for your life, terrified for your life. And there's nobody in the room. She's in there by herself. And Miles Teller's character is instructed to watch and give his thoughts. Simultaneously, he is given a drug called, uh, it's like Lucy language, or loose language or something. And this makes him more talkative. And he's supposed to express his thoughts of what's happening. And what happens is the girl that's in the, the, the ob observation room, she smashes her pack like the pack on her back accidentally she smashes it up against the wall and it malfunctions and it gives her like an extreme dose of this stuff and at that point she goes nuts and, and she grabs a knife or like she breaks a piece of wood into a sharp object and she's going like this like get away from me there's nobody in there and she gets so scared she can't do it stabs herself in the neck blood all over the mirror and miles teller's character is just basically explaining what's happening that she is scared for her life more than she's ever been in her life. She's remembering all of the terrible things that have happened. She's remembering the guilt of her life. And she's terrified. She's like, it's like an extreme dose of PTSD. And yeah, Steve runs out of the room. He drops his keys on the floor. This is after he'd put his little notebook into the desk right beside Miles Teller's character. He grabs a notebook and he discovers that, you know, Steve is the CEO of this company. He's in charge. 
As earlier in the film, he'd said, you know, I have people above me, the protocol committee, the prop com, he says. I have people above me. They're giving me orders. They're giving me instructions to 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 do what we got to do to you people. I don't want to do this. You know, that's what he said. He's like, I don't want to do this. You think I like this? You think I like doing this? I don't like this any better than you. When really, he's the one uh, designing all of these psychological tests. So at that point, Miles Teller's character is pissed off. And... and He's developed an, an atta- attachment connection with his character, Lizzie. Later on in the movie, um, Hemsworth's character begins to put forth the idea that Jeff, Miles Teller's character, is going to have to administer this this dark flummox drug to Lizzie, who he's beginning to care for and, and have feelings of love for. And, um, yeah, I don't know if I mentioned before, but about the guilt thing and... and that burden that it holds, it plays with that idea a lot. Guilt, burden, and redemption. Is it, Can a person be redeemed after doing something heinous? After doing something horrible? What measure... What measure do we weigh that against for if they can be redeemed? Um, so yeah, Chris, uh, Miles, he, he refuses to give... He, Jeff refuses to give her the dark flummox. Lizzie. And Steve is getting real pissed off at this. So he says, you know what? You think you love her? You don't love her. Let me tell you what she did. And it turns out she left her child uh, in a scorching hot vehicle in the middle of summer for three hours. And the child died, nine month old. And she breaks down, you know, as horrific as that action is, as horrific of, as horrific as that is, you know, she's a broken person. You think she's proud of that? She's not. She's extremely regretful. She's extremely upset. And it plays with the idea of like, can she be redeemed ever? She's going to live with that for the rest of her life. So Miles says like, no, that's fine. You don't have to tell me. You don't have to tell me. But she tells him anyways. And he says, you know, he's shocked, but he says he still loves her. Uh, Unbeknownst to Chris, who has been also taking these drugs, I, I should say. Um, Mark got second thoughts about the whole operation uh, and him and Jeff had a heart to heart and they figured out a way to kind of turn the tables on Steve and give him some of his own medicine so at this point Miles gives him a dose of the uh, of all of these drugs and he starts you know having breakdown falls to the floor and it turns out the entire time Steve was trying to test this drug. He's been testing this drug called B6. And it's basically a bingo card, right? It's like a bingo card and then all the numbers. And that's what he's been naming the drugs after. So B6 and it's OBDX. OBDX. He wants to invent this obedience drug to mass produce, mass market. And, and, you know, he starts talking about like a crazy scientist genius at that point, right? Do the ends justify the means? At that point... No, because he wants to make people do things, things they don't want to do, because he says, oh, well, we're never going to have drunk drivers again. We're never going to have people beating their wives again because they're going to be on OBDX. They're going to be obedient. They're going to do what we tell them. And that's the crux of the movie, basically. That's the crux of the thematic root, the moral and ethical considerations of manipulating people's emotions of playing around with their free will, what it means to have free will, what it means to play around with somebody's free will, basically. So pretty interesting performance by Chris Hemsworth. He kind of puts on a show. It's the whole movie has kind of a, almost like a black comedy, comedic tone, some good soundtrack elements that are, that are put in. The score is pretty nice, some nice scenery. You have this kind of facility that's kind of like an art decor, weird facility. Uh, one of the in- inmates is Rictus. Rictus! From Mad Max Fury Road. He's put on a couple pounds though, but he's still a beast. And yeah, this movie surprised me. Give it a shot. 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 I actually liked it. So um, I wasn't sure at the beginning, but it, could, it, it, it had me at the end. I'd give it like a solid, I don't know, 6.5. 6.5 out of 10. It's not very original. You know, Philip K. Dick has done a lot of this. and It does feel like an elongated Black Mirror episode, but 
yeah let me know your thoughts on the film down below and we'll see you on the next video peace out everybody